Hi, my name is Katie Clark. Um, my husband's name is Steve and we had two children, but one passed away this last year. Emma was only 13 years old when she left us and Duncan is our remaining child who just turned eight. When Emma was born, we had no idea that anything was less than perfect and everything was great for the first 11 months. It was about that time that our daycare let us know that she was showing signs of not being able to keep up with her peers. She wasn't able to pull up to stand like the other toddlers were. It's a rare muscular dystrophy known as Emery Dreyfus. It's a neuromuscular disease where when children are small, they can have certain physical abilities and throughout the years as they age, their muscles waste away no matter how much physical therapy they get. And as they get older, they just lose more and more physical ability. It came as a complete shock. We had never heard of the Emory Dreyfus form of muscular dystrophy. As soon as we knew Emma had it, Katie and I decided to get tested to see which one of us was a carrier. We soon found out she had the rarest form of inheritance, autosomal recessive. We, we learned that this meant two copies of the EMD gene in each of her cells had been altered. My wife and I we're both carriers, meaning each of us had one copy of the altered EMD gene, but neither of us showed symptoms. The doctors informed us that if we chose to have any more children, that there would be a 25% chance of us affecting them, a 50% chance that they would be carriers, and a 25% chance that they wouldn't be affected at all. When Emma started school, uh, we'd need 20 hours of nursing a day. We'd have a shift that came in at 10 o'clock at night and stay till seven in the morning. And they'd watch her and monitor her all through the night. And then the morning shift would come in around seven and they'd help me get her ready for school. And they'd stay with her until six o'clock when either Steve or I would come home from work. Emma needed to have heart medication, an appetite stimulant, and be fed her nutrition through a G-tube. So it could take us up to an hour and a half for her to get ready in the mornings. Emma used to do a lot of things with her legs and feet. She played the Wii, she used the computer, and she even painted with her toes. She was able to do things on the computer that she couldn't do in her real life. Scientists and doctors turned us towards genetic counseling and had prepared us for the possibility that Emma could need a heart transplant because her disease caused abnormal heart rhythms. Emma got a cardiac pacemaker when she was seven and part of her treatment was for two and a half hours of physical therapy every day at school. This is Emma's favorite part. She loved coming here in the afternoons and watching Duncan and the other kids play. Some of my favorite times were when Duncan would run up to her and tell her how much he loved her. When Emma was really little, I would pray to be able to keep her. And then when we decided to have Duncan, um, a few years later, we were just so blessed that he was completely unaffected in every way. We saw that Emma really loved Duncan and we just think about how blessed he was and we were to have them growing up in a home together and it was just really amazing. I, I then started praying that Duncan would be old enough to remember Emma and I'm just really glad he hasn't forgotten her. When I still had both my children we considered ourselves to be a pretty normal family. It's just that it would take us about 10 times the amount of things to get through every day before we would be ready. 
It took a lot of planning, but we still did it. <laughs>